Well, I don't know about you, but uh, my HF noise levels are increasing. They've increased a lot in the last few months. Even on 20 metres now, I've got a fair old noise floor developing. Only about S3, S4, which I know for a lot of people isn't too bad, but for me it's getting annoyingly higher than it used to be. And um, I have to say, I'm now taking more to operating HF uh, mobile these days. The thing is about going mobile, it's not just about getting a decent signal out there. You know, you could be up top of a hill, or you could be near to the sea and have a lovely takeoff next to the salt water. It's just the fact you've got no noise. Ah, it's bliss, isn't it? No noise floor. Uh, what's the benefit of that? Well, the thing is, going mobile allows you to get away from the noise and it really improves your receive. Um, case in point, last week I went up a hill, uh, worked a guy over in uh, West Malaysia, new DXCC for me. Now he was only S2, S3, it wasn't a great contact both ways, we, we made it. Um, I wouldn't have heard that at home. And it's not just about getting getting your signal out there, it's about being able to hear things, you know, and I got him because I was able to tune around the band, he wasn't spotted on the cluster, he was later, but he was checking for the frequencies in use and I managed to get him. I would have got him if I was at home because my noise levels are just far too high. So if you suffer from something similar, a great idea is to go HF mobile. Now, if you've never been HF mobile before and you're not sure what setup you should look to do, there is a way you can try it out for a relatively low expense which will allow you to sort of dip your toe into the water of it, perhaps. Now, I do get that for a lot of people, uh, HF Mobile isn't an option for a variety of reasons, and I get that. So I'm not preaching out to you that you should do this, but just something you can explore. When you read forums, it'll tell you you have to have a great ground, and it's important, of course, a good capacitive ground when you go mobile, that is, but you don't have to drill a hole or, or screw a mount into your, into your metalwork. You can try it out with a mag mount. Now, it's going to work far better from you for you, I should say, from 20 meters and up, all right? 40 meters and down, magmounts get a lot more tricky to use, even the triple magmounts. But if you're gonna be operating, say, of 20 on 15, 17, 12, or 10, then a single mag, or certainly a triple mag mount, is very likely to work for you. This means you can try HF mobile without having to think about having to drill a hole in the car. Uh, now, the mag mounts themselves, I use a single mag mount. I've got a fairly decent sized car. It's a, it's a Mondeo, which in the UK is a Ford. It's a decent sized saloon. So there's plenty of metal up there on the roof for it to use. So a single mag mount allows me, along with uh, an antenna, which I'll tell you about in a minute, it allows me to get a, a very good SWR on basically HF bands from 20 and up. So 20 up to 10 meters isn't a problem. Now those mag mounts themselves cost about 15 pounds, something like that, or $20 and a fairly inexpensive. And then you see, you can get a fairly cheap antenna to go with it. Now I use monoband hamstick type antennas, which in the UK are known as AMPRO, A-M-P-R-O uh, antennas. And they're a two piece antenna and they're pretty easy to tune. Uh, they're monoband, very light. Obviously they come in two sections, so they're quite easy to take around with you. Uh, lots of people put them into sort of conduit piping to take around with them in, in the boot of their car, in the trunk of the car. So um, to be honest with you, they're quite easy to take around with you and to deploy. And uh, the only thing about them is they are single band antennas. You've got to use one at a time. But uh, I have in the past on bands which don't really interfere with each other too much. I've had two single mag mounts on the roof of the car. So I've run a 20 and a 10, I've run a 20 and a 15. And uh, I've had no real problems just with a little uh, antenna switch in the car. So these Ampro antennas, they're basically uh, base loaded. So you've got a coil at the bottom. So for the 20 meter version, the coil is quite tightly wound because obviously 20 meters is a, is a lower frequency than say 10 meters, where the coil is, is fairly um, relaxed in terms of how, how it is there. And it's not actually far off a uh, resonant quarter wave on 10 meters anyway. It's, it's not far off the actual quarter wave length. But obviously on 20 meters, it's, it's probably just under an eighth wave, something like that. But a vertical antenna with a nice takeoff angle, perhaps near the sea or on a, on a nice sort of hillside somewhere, or just anywhere that's electrically quiet, will do you pretty well. And you'd be surprised what you can hear and work, even with a short vertical antenna, like a, an Ampro hamstick on the car. And of course, the beauty is you have a quite or very low noise floor. Where I go, I go up a couple of uh, local hills, I go by the sea, zero noise, and just to have that luxury of a zero noise floor is so good. Now, as I said, you may not be able to get into a car, you may not be able to go up a hill, you may not be able, you maybe don't own a car, maybe you don't have the time, you've got other commitments, fine, and other things that may stop you. Hey, fine, no problem, not preaching to you that you have to do it, but consider it as an option. And for the price of a mag mount, the price of a 
just buy a 20 meter Ampro ham stick to start off with. That's about 50 pounds combined, okay? Obviously you need a radio and a source of power as well. I'll cover power in a, in a later video, but in terms of what I use, I use a LifePo 4 battery by a company called Tracer. Uh, I use the 24 amp hour version, I think it is. Uh, it goes all day and LifePo 4 technology is just brilliant. And I'll cover that in a later video. It's really light, but you can use a bog standard lead acid battery if you want to. Just take care with how you carry it around and transport it and keep it. Uh, keep it well charged, but they'll do a job. You can, of course, run the, uh, run the wires directly to the car battery. You can do that if you want to. That's absolutely fine, of course. And lots of people do that for perhaps more permanent installs. The only caveat is that when you use 40 and 80 meters mobile, you tend to need to have a much better capacitive grounding. So you probably will then need to go down the road of properly bonding uh, a more permanent sort of uh, mount for your antenna. But at the end of the day, what works, works. And you should have a lot of fun, especially from 20 meters and up in terms of HF mobile. And click on this link to see how much fun I've had in the past when operating with the same setup I've just described to you, 73.